slides. So without further delay, I, it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker today, so Kevin Cooney. He's Head of Agri-Markets at ASB Bank. Now, ASB Bank is a significant player in New Zealand's rural sector. And for over the last four years, Kevin has established and led the ASB Agri-Capital, building strategy support, capital structuring, and arranging for food and agribusiness operating um, support at all points across the, the value chain. Kevin is on the ASB Rural Leadership Team and Corporate Leadership Team, and it is a pleasure to have him participate on our program today. So Kevin will spend the next 15 minutes or so sharing his vision for the development of New Zealand's ag tech ecosystem and the role that New Zealand's major banks and other corporate entities can play to accelerate that vision. So thank you, Kevin. It was lovely to have you up here. Well, thank you very much. Um, and uh, it's, it's really great to be here and part of this discussion. And um, uh, I think, um, just very quickly, I think major corporates, uh, and in particular the banks, have a very major role to play in helping to evolve uh, the agri-tech ecosystem. Just a little bit of quick background before we start. Um, so I uh, work uh, with the ASB Bank, as, as, uh, as introduced. I run our rural corporate business, uh, which specialises in lending to uh, rural businesses, mainly behind the farm gate farming businesses um, in the sort of $20 million and above uh, sector. But I also head our agri-capital business, and in that business we've um, uh, looked at uh, um, working with uh, startup companies um, as well as working with established agribusiness companies with their capital structures. When Peter um, first approached me and asked if I would uh, contribute to this event, uh, which um, I was very pleased to do, I asked him what's the objective of this and he said to me, look, what we're trying to do here is um, create more of a bridge between large businesses and the startup community. In other words, we need to develop greater engagement uh, between these different entities. Um, and I couldn't agree more. So in that vein, in the time that I've got, what I'd like to do is just cover uh, three things. Uh, firstly, uh, from a bank's perspective, um, the why uh, for engaging with the agri-tech community. Um, I'd also like to touch on some of the things that we have been doing in this space, the what, if you like. And then finally, I'll just uh, touch on how, as an organisation, um, I think we can uh, improve our engagement and uh, uh, play a meaningful part in this evolving ecosystem. Now, um, part of the delay for this morning is uh, I did have a, a very brief presentation, uh, not to bore you with PowerPoint slides, but I really wanted to make a point before we get started, and, and it's this. Um, Agri-tech uh, is, is not new to the rural community. Farmers for generations have been embracing uh, the latest uh, and most useful innovations in, in technology. And really to highlight that point, uh, I'm from a farming background myself. My grandfather was a, a farming contractor uh, in the southern region. When he died, he left a, a huge stack of uh, his collection of magazines, New Zealand Power Farming and New Zealand Australia farming magazines. And I happened to flip through one from 1956 on the weekend and uh, amazed at the ads for uh, new seed drills, precision farming, would you believe, uh, new tractors, all of them highlighting uh, features uh, and advantages uh, for farmers. If ag tech is going to um, succeed in the form that we're seeing it today, it's still going to have to appeal to the farmer mindset on those, on those fundamentals. That hasn't changed. What has changed, though, and what makes this so vitally important uh, is, a, 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 well, are a couple of things. Firstly, just the sheer pace of change that's occurring today, um, enabled by technology innovation, um, but also enabled by consumers 
who are now more powerful than ever because of technology. And that in turn um, is driving uh, and will continue to drive disruption in our uh, agri, uh, agri, agri value and supply chains. And that's, that's profound. It's probably the one industry that's hugely traditional and has resisted uh, profound disruption uh, up until now. Now, I was at a, in terms of the why, um, at a FinTech gathering yesterday morning, and I um, find that the development of that sector offers useful parallels uh, for ag tech. Now, we're talking about uh, WeChat and social media and the like, we're talking about China, India. There is something like 650 million consumers in China today who use the WeChat social media app uh, and they do that for all sorts of commerce to meet all sorts of uh, needs. And those apps are weaving themselves into uh, their culture and their social fabric and so their uh, expectations then of an experience um, around food, around the things that we produce are um, fundamentally changing and evolving. And so as an industry, we absolutely have to keep in step with that if we're to remain competitive. So when I think about the why, also I think about our own customers and the organisation. Um, increasingly, uh, we need to be in a position as an organisation to uh, help and support our customers uh, to adopt or at least be able to uh, work out the innovations that do matter, the innovations that will help to create efficiencies, productivity gains, uh, embed greater value in their farming businesses. Not only is that good for them, but it safeguards uh, those businesses, future-proofs them, and from our perspective, uh, makes them uh, a, a better proposition from a, from a credit risk perspective. I think that there's a heck of a lot more that we could be doing as an organisation and working with the ag community. And I think there's a lot more that we could be doing to leverage some of the innovations that are occurring, not just in ag tech, but in fintech as well. And there's also a class called reg tech. But bringing some of these technologies together and creating efficiencies, uh, for example, there'll come a point in time where because of the availability of real-time data, uh, banks will be able to uh, produce uh, what's called straight through credit processing. In other words, highly simplified uh, loan applications and approvals based on bespoke credit ratings for individual customers. Now interestingly in the fintech sector that's already happening to an extent. There are fintech companies out there now who uh, will develop a rating for insurance purposes for a consumer but not actually require much in the way of financial information. They'll simply go to uh, your web uh, page, your Facebook page, they'll search your digital footprint in order to build a profile and develop, uh, develop a rating for the individual. I've seen that happening in working capital as well. There's no reason why that won't uh, develop and evolve uh, by way of partnerships and collaboration between the banking community and the rural community. So I see the why is, is profound. If we step up from, uh, from our individual industries and just look at the macro picture as well, um, to my mind, uh, embracing digital and working in partnerships uh, around these types of innovations is fundamentally critical to uh, our competitive positioning globally. Uh, relying on a traditional competitive advantage based on um, being uh, the very best, uh, safest, sustainable, low-cost commodity producers is all and well. Uh, but increasingly, as uh, internet-type technologies reshape consumer expectations of an experience around food and their power to choose um, and interact more directly with producers, uh, we have to evolve uh, in order to meet, to meet that demand. 
my final point on why is something I've talked to Peter about uh, informally, and that's uh, given these imperatives, my observation is that we're in the very early stages of a, of a functioning, healthy, value-creating agri-tech uh, ecosystem. And in some respects, like our fintech industry, we're still relatively immature uh, by international standards. And I'd also say that uh, we're quite fragmented too. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's a feature of being relatively immature. But if we're going to realise the potential of this, and if we're going to uh, create an industry that can ultimately be an export industry in its own right, and mark my words, there is that potential there if we can marshal our resources appropriately, then I believe we need to uh, develop something that's more akin to a, to a national association or a national strategy. If we don't do that, uh, one of the risks I think we run is that the very best of our initiatives fail to get appropriate support and they fail to get appropriate funding. And in fact, the allocation of capital that is available for this sector uh, is, is ultimately misallocated, perhaps to suboptimal initiatives, uh, simply because we're not big enough to be funding uh, everything. So I think that degree of national coordination is, is, is critically important. So that's just a few thoughts on, on the why from the, from the bank's perspective. I thought I'd touch very quickly now on some of the things that we have done over the last couple of years. Um, and I'll just start back um, around 2014. We sat down and started asking ourselves, well, OK, um, what is it that we need to be doing as an organisation uh, to be participating in this more fully, fu fully and more meaningfully? Um, what are our challenges? What are we good at? What are we not so good at? What we worked out very quickly was, um, as a very large gorilla, if you like, um, it's very, very difficult for us to um, uh, be creative around an idea to support a particular piece of ag tech, then act on it um, uh, quickly to create a, a prototype, if you like, test it, and if it fails, start again. So what we worked out was that startup companies are in fact uh, far better than, at that than us. And so since 2014, uh, we've entered into strategic partnerships with uh, three or four startups operating in different sectors uh, of the uh, agri-tech spectrum. And we've learned, learned a lot along the way. Um, one observation I'd make in that is that a strategic partnership can take one of a number of forms. There's, there is a spectrum of engagement with startups, ranging from simple mentoring of uh, CEOs or people uh, right through to uh, something more elaborate like a, an accelerator or an innovation lab um, or facilitating uh, the startup achieving sales. Because when we think about strategic partnerships, it's not just about putting <coughs> equity into a startup. And in some ways, I think equity into startups is, is just uh, not often a, uh, a great outcome for the startup. So we've, we've engaged in three or four of those things. Um, the other initiative that um, I've been involved in also uh, has been uh, sponsoring um, uh, in a, what we call innovation showcases with New Zealand Trade and Enterprise. Uh, we've run, I think, four or five of those in various regions, and that's a gathering of angel investors into a room of around 100 or so people and nine or 10 um, nascent or growing uh, agri-tech companies pitching uh, for support uh, and capital. Um, I've seen that evolve over the last three years from uh, something that's been fairly sort of uh, scraggly, if you like, to use a technical term, uh, to the last one I went to um, the, the nine companies that pitched, it was a case of being spoilt for choice. The quality of the presentations and the quality of activity was extremely high and it was incredibly heartening to see that occur over a two to three year period. So as I've said before, 
um, these innovations and what's occurring globally is, in, is occurring incredibly rapidly. Um, finally, in terms of how we might better um, engage with the ag tech community, um, as a large organisation, I think the best uh, thing that we can be uh, thinking about is um, having, having a more coherent uh, approach to uh, and strategy for supporting that community. Um, and, and to be a little more specific around that, the thing that I think about is um, how can we best participate in and help to create and form uh, the healthy and functioning ecosystem that's so necessary to make this, uh, to make all of this work. Um, there is no way that the ag tech industry on its own, I think, can um, get the traction necessary for growth. One of the key challenges uh, I've seen in the stuff that we've done and is, is an issue globally um, is the ability of uh, ag tech companies with great initiatives uh, to sell those into an on-farm application, or, or rather, to put it simply, to sell it to farmers. That's a global challenge. And I think what's needed uh, in order to overcome that challenge um, is the creation of a, of a trusted platform uh, whereby if you are a farming business, you're able to uh, pick and choose what works for your operation off that platform, uh, but the models I've seen working overseas do involve farming businesses relying on trusted advisors and trusted intermediaries, just as they have been for generations around uh, soil, seed, or, or various other technology needs um, on farm. So I think that piece hasn't disappeared. What's important is understanding the role that it, it will play going forward. Now I see our role as a bank uh, as best placed building partnerships with those organisations that will form the back, backbone of that platform. And then together uh, creating an ecosystem um, that enables healthy growth of these initiatives, it enables funding, it accelerates uh, the, the value they're designed to create and then ultimately helps them to scale their operations up into other markets, uh, hopefully overseas. Now, one partnership we've been involved in, in fact, I, I would suggest it was probably one of the first strategic partnerships of a large bank uh, with, a, with a, an ag tech based startup. This was in 2014. Um, that particular startup, which is well known and will be well known in this room, um, has gone on to build partnerships based on the model we created uh, three odd years ago um, with banks in Australia uh, and with banks in the United States. And it's a really, um, it's a really great achievement on their part. Anyway, those are just a few thoughts from a, from a bank's perspective. Um, I'd be interested if, uh, if you've got any questions on that. Can you talk about the, who that company was that you formed that partnership with? Yep, it was uh, Figured On Farm. Well, now, now Figured. Um, so, um, I mean, they've done a fabulous job. Um, LIC are an investor. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of what they've achieved and who, who's invested in that business uh, is now public information, but um, I think, you know, just an interesting story around that when we, um, Paul Reed, who was then running the business, I'm sure Paul wouldn't mind me relating the story, but when they were um, looking to scale their business and, and looking for support, came and had a meeting with us and explained what their product was all about, and that sounded great, and then Paul said, well, hey, um, you know, our, our strategy or our go-to-market is we're, is we're going to, uh, because this is so good and we're solving such a great problem, uh, we're going to go to the farmers and we're going to sell it and it's going to be great. And we, we listened to that and thought, intuitively, that's not going to work. 
And the reason why we thought that was, um, from our experience of the farming and rural community, if it ain't broke, they're not going to fix it. Simple as that. And absolutely got that it created potential value, absolutely got that it created this uh, cloud-based community of users, and, um, and got too that you know, it, it potentially solved a problem. Um, at that point, we said, look, great, but don't agree with you, go to, go to market. Three months later, we had another discussion. Paul says, well, actually, a go-to-market now is to sell this product through a trusted intermediary. We're going to go down the um, accountant's channel. And I thought to myself, that's brilliant. Absolutely. That will work. Because you're working with a channel partner who themselves are being disrupted by digital. And it, we're engaged because our business, of all businesses, is highly vulnerable to disruption. Our business won't look the same in five years' time. Um, and just in terms of strategic thinking here for, the, for, the, for a moment, it's not rocket science. When we first started out thinking about all of this, um, we didn't think, here's our big complex strategy. We thought it's not an option to do nothing. We have to do something. We're not sure what it is, but we'll experiment and have a go. And it was pretty interesting when I was putting very small sums of money by the bank standards to support uh, a strategic partnership with a startup. Um, I had an executive come to me and say, well, okay, before we sign this off, what if we lose this money? And I said, well, that's the point. It doesn't matter. Um, what's more important here is that we're actually doing something. And I would suggest to you, colleague, that we probably will lose this money. But, but what we have to understand here is that the value in doing this partnership is in learning. Um, it's in participating in this ecosystem. It won't be perfect. Mm. And the other thing we had to be really careful about was um, being a gorilla. Once we take on a startup as a dance partner, uh, we're very, very good at standing on people's toes and stomping all over them just because culturally you want to document everything and all the rest of it. So we had to learn culturally too how to have a light touch. Anyway, conscious of timing, any other questions? Okay, well thank you very much. Cheers.